There we go. Hi. Oh, wonderful. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Happy to be on here. Oh, I am pleased as punch to have you. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm also delighted, but I'm slightly comforted by the organization in your room, how the, I don't know if it's a throw, how it's neatly folded. Above the Black and white. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you see the dino pillow? Oh, I do. Okay. That's how I know it's not a virtual background. That's a real <laughs> Tara Erickson background. It's a real Tara Erickson move right there. <laughs> Dang it. I actually thought I was going to bring out a dino to, in honor of you, but I don't have any dinosaurs. Oh, God. What are you doing with your life? Apparently not the right things because I don't yeah. have any dinosaurs. I mean, I would think with you, don't you have a Brazilian wife? Wouldn't she love like <laughs> dinos? <laughs> I mean, we do a little role play in the bedroom where I can uh -huh. see Rex. Uh -huh. But if we had toys, that would make things even better. And I know it. Oh, God. And she always has told me Velociraptor is her favorite dinosaur. <laughs> if they so. made a dinosaur vibrator, I would buy it just for the <laughs> sake of having it. I would just bring it out as like a as a party toy and be like, guys, I know this party is a fucking snooze, but like, look <laughs> at this. Seriously. <laughs> Oh my God. Instead of the rabbit, it'd be the raptor. I love it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is amazing. Well, hey, thank you for coming on. I hope you're ready first off for the I'm intro ready. that I've prepared for you. And then oh we're going to talk about you. And then we're going to give some advice. Let's do it. For it. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. It's been, by the way, it's, I feel like it's been so long since I've done one of these episodes. Oh I'm shit, so, really? <laughs> yeah. It's been like three whole days. No, it's <laughs> been, I, it's been before Christmas, I think. So yeah, it's, it's getting back. Well, we can talk about it, but getting back into life has been weird. <laughs> yeah, I, yes, I agree <laughs> today. Uh, I don't know. Anxiety was just like, boom. And, uh, it was, uh, you know, tough. But you, you and know I what? are on You're... the same page. <laughs> you know what? May... Hopefully my sound panels, they look kind of nice and neat and organized. Maybe they they're... do. They, they, they calm me down. It's a feng shui thing you get going on in there. Oh, yes. That's what I was going for. I yeah. read the Marie Kondo book. So I was, <laughs> I was sparking with joy. So You're doing better than me because I have not <laughs> read that book nor watched the show. So I don't think you have to. You just do, I just uh... need to look at your wall. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All you need to do is look at this wall right here. Yeah. And uh, um, yeah, I think all you got to do is just find things that spark joy and not spark joy. And then things that don't spark joy. You throw them out. 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 Yeah. yeah. Out. I'm down with that. I mean, That's I'm a frequent get out, get out of here, throw stuff out. I'm that person. Like I don't oh. hoard, but like, I got a lot of stuff though. <laughs> Oh my God. I just, my wife and I, we watched the minimalists documentary on Netflix and they were like, you can do the challenge where you throw one thing out the first day, two things out the second day. And we're looking at each other. Like, I don't think we have enough stuff and we're going through it. And we're like, we have enough stuff. Enough stuff. You always do. And I hate it. Oh my God. I know. I know. And it's so, it's so tough. I'm like, oh, but this, you know, coin, this piggy bank I've had since I was six years old. Do I use it? No. Cause it's too fragile to hold a penny, but the sentimental values there, but. I know, um, but I did throw out a sentimental thing that I made at like artful Potter when I was 12 and signed it. It was like a pencil holder. And I was like, it's time to let you go now, little buddy. And I <laughs> sent it off to Goodwill. And by when someone turns that puppy over, it's going to say like Tara 2000 and no, no. When I was 12, 19, oh, I think it said 96 on it. Oh my gosh. Woof, woof, oh. vintage. Oh man. Well, you just, that's all Marie Kondo says. You, you, if it doesn't spark joy, you thank it for taking place in your life. And then you send it off. So it sounds like you did the right thing. That's what I did. I'm doing it. Oh, awesome. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to, uh, let me clear the pipes. Do I know how clear to clear it this? before you do the intro? I know I'm so out of practice. Goodbye, everyone. I mean, hello, everyone. I don't even know where I'm going anymore. All right.
two, three. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of a comedy advice podcast. My name is Stefan Satani. I'm your host. Joining me today, very special guest. She's an actress with a leading role in the Lifetime Network movie, Twisted Nanny, and so much more. She's also appeared in the Noah's Ark worth of commercials alongside Geraldo Rivera, Carrot Top, and more. And she's also got a YouTube, TikTok, Instagram filled to the brim with comedy. Everybody. Oh, she also taught me about ruffles and pickles everybody please welcome tara erickson (laughs) that is like the best intro ever oh my (laughs) god sour cream and onion ruffles and pickles are the spice of life oh my gosh i've i I had to bring potato chips back into my diet just for that because i am i'm like a huge pickle file i don't know i don't like the sound of that but i I, I love pickle guy you're a pickle guy. Yes, I, I, I'm a pickle connoisseur. And yeah. I just, I love everything pickle. I remember when I first had whiskey with the pickle juice chaser. And I was like, pickle is life. Pickle is magic. Yeah. And people and, say, uh, don't get picklebacks at bars. Because they're like, you don't know how long that pickle juice has been there. Or where it's been. And people don't get picklebacks. And I'm like, well, I do. And I do not care. Doesn't pickle juice last forever? It's like cherry juice. It like can conserve a dead body. So we all just need to let it go and enjoy the spice of life. <laughs> it is like, it is getting way too old to focus on where the pickle juice has been. Look at where we are right now as just a country, a little bit, and the world <laughs> is a wet hot pile of garbage. Pickle juice sitting in the back of a jar for 15 years is little, little of my concern. Truer words have <laughs> never been said. Uh, uh, pickle juice it's like an embalming fluid like you said it's who can are you a sommelier are you like does this pickle juice come from the tuscan region no who gives a shit it's pickle juice it's exactly to make your life better it's probably going to make you live longer i mean instead of plastic surgery the weekend could have just drank pickle juice and he would have been well preserved i would agree except i did drink a lot of pickle juice like four days ago i don't know what got into me i just kept slamming into this kosher dill plastic jar which is so huge and I'm like it's so delicious and then I panicked like I think it was like so much salt or something like three hours later and I was like maybe it's the pickle juice but also (laughs) maybe it's like the world and too much COVID news but then I couldn't figure out the two and I was like I think I gotta avoid pickle juice for a while (laughs) oh my god can you imagine your doctor being like Tara you really gotta lay off you've got a great diet looking great but you know the the pickle juice, you just got to lay low on that for a little while, all right? <laughs> I would hate him if he said that. <laughs> <laughs> I would hate myself if I had to say that, if I was a doctor giving that news. God, it's terrible. I, I, I love pickle juice. <laughs> but I think, was that the video where you did the Amazon grocery unbagging and then you had the jar of pickle juice and you're like there are no more pickles here i just love the pickle juice (laughs) i just drank that juice seriously you gotta say it i'm like people who are not drinking their pickle juice and they love kosher pickles i do not know what they're doing with their lives they are missing out on just quite an opportunity oh hell yeah and i mean (laughs) if you if you lose out if you can't get groceries save your pickle juice i'm sure that there's enough nutrients in there to keep you sustained for i would agree I've dipped some bread into pickle juice before, soaked it in there and ate it to, and just was like, pretend it's a sandwich. And it was just as good. Is, I, I don't know why Gerber's hasn't capitalized on pickle juice baby food. I feel like exactly. that would just be all the growth hormones and nutrients that a baby would need to be able to grow nice and strong. It, it would be great if you were a real big fan of Wicked because when you feed a baby too many carrots, they get real tan and orangey. But if you fed a kid too many pickles, if they got green, you could be like, it's Alphaba from Wicked. <laughs> which would Amazing. be great. Or the um, Grinch, which may not be great, but I'm a fan of him. Oh, the Grinch. He turned out good. I think the Grinch is a great guy because maybe not before, but he was in a bad spot. And then he was able to overcome all of that Christmas grumpiness and become a real non humbugger. I feel yeah. like he was, uh, you know, a, a and real his heart good guy. grew three sizes that day. <laughs> he became a real boy. That's that's very, very true. Oh, Grinch and Jim Carrey. I think that was one of the top so trending. Good. 
movies on Netflix for oh a yeah good it should part be. of Christmas. I don't know why it got so many bad reviews in the beginning, but now it's like a cult classic. I've always loved it. Oh, same, same. My brothers and I, we used to quote it all the time. I still remember <laughs> one of the lines where he's like, his answering machine is like, if you show much after one syllable, I'll hunt you down and got you like a fish. Yes. Max me, press the stocky. Oh. Ah! Steven, <laughs> we, you've been hiding this Grinch voice away. What is wrong with you? You need to go out and be the Grinch every freaking Christmas. Oh my God. You know what? If I have kids, no Santa, Grinch. 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 It's a Grinchmas in Steven's oh. house. And oh it should be. God. Oh my God. And your Brazilian wife could play uh, What's Her Nuts from the Grinch Su movie. Cindy God, I love Lou her. Who? No, no, my God, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, oh God, what is her name as an actress? Uh, she's so freaking good and it's escaping me. This is Ed Happens every time. I'm like, what? Uh, uh, What's her nuts from that one movie where they play maybe baseball and everyone's like, we don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, oh, it's so clear in my brain. She plays like the sexy one who falls in love with Grinch at the end. She's oh my God. I know exactly who you're talking about. Your wife uh, could play her. She's so good. I love her so much. Oh she's my God. Here, she's one of my favorite. Finger. She's so I good. have her. I she have her face. Dolly Parton film this year see oh or oh my it'll God. come to me or maybe oh, you man. but she's great people will oh. know who we're talking they're yelling at us right now through the speakers we're yeah you know what if you guys know who it is tell us we can't hear you right now because it's not live but eventually we will know we and maybe will. In post i'll just bleep it out so then we'll be like oh yeah it was joan rivers or yes. whoever the heck it was so yes there we go. i think her first name is Catherine. Ah, this is, it, it's going to come to me, Steven. It'll come. It'll come. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to tell, we're going to give some advice, but first I wanted to talk a little about you, Tara, Tara Eriks. By the way, your name is like the perfect roller coaster of consonant to vowel to consonant to vowel. I was saying it and I was like, Tara Erickson. Erickson, right? I feel that way too, but I think that's why a lot of doctors will look at my name and they'll just go Erica. They'll just like say Erica. Like I get that all the time. And I'm like, Tara Erickson. And they're like, oh yeah, Tara. It's like, they see my name as huh. like one full word. It's so weird. It doesn't happen all the time, but mm. I do agree that my name has some soliloquy. It does. It does. And you know what? Shame on those doctors and people for jumping straight to the Erica. Cause there's, yeah. there's power in Tara and it does, it flows together like uh, Sinbad, maybe just like a one worded Tara Erickson. But yes. I, the Tara needs to be there. It's powerful. It, for sure, 100%. I'm a powerful woman, Stephen. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, it's Stefan. I did. Oh my God, Stefan, duh. I hear your <laughs> name all the time on the podcast. And I'm reading, I'm reading your name and I'm like, I see Stephen. <laughs> Tani. And I'm it, like, yes, it's Stefan. You nailed the last name, by that the way. Is, that is so crazy that I'm like, I listen. That's bonkers. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to my life. It's okay. My parents sabotaged everyone because they spelled it just like Steven, but then they tried to give the syllables panache like Stefan. So yeah, that, my that last D needs to be an A, Stefan. I know. I know. I'm working on it. We're, we're working on the legal papers and everything. Maybe I should just go by Satani. I, I like love Satani. I'm just, I was literally just going to say, I'm going to call you Satani. Uh, that's the <laughs> coolest freaking name. Like skip, because I, I look at your little box and it has your name right there. And I will forever be like Steven, even though I've oh. heard it a different way. It's, huh. you know, if you call me Satani, I would love it because I always, I cherished the last name calling in high school, but I was yes. never cool enough to earn it. So I was, I was kind of a nerdy kid. I wasn't a band, so I played some music, but people were always like Stefan or Steven or nerd, but I never got Satani and I always wanted to be Satani because I felt like my last name was so cool. Yes. It sounds almost mafia-like, like Satani. Well, hey. what, what instrument were you playing, Satani? I was playing well, triangle. You're, you're pulling out the tuba. What the try? <laughs> yeah, I knew it. <laughs> no, I, I was playing. Oh boy, give us a taste. 
If oh. it's in the room, you got. If it's in the room, you got to give us some juice. This, <gasps> yes, give us the this, juice. Do you want some pickle juice? Yes, Satani, uh... you've, you've got a ding ding in the mic. <laughs> Show us your skills. He's oh, not going to do it. He's I setting it down. Oh, oh, it, it fell. actually fell. I think I it, broke it. You, oh, you no, know, please say no. This is oh, what my. happens when I <laughs> when I when I play around with pickle juice. Things. <laughs> If you don't get it in the right place, that that was my guitar. I saved up all my money at, at lifeguard school. No lifeguard place pool. The pool. Cool. I was it's a lifeguard. The yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. And I saved up all my money in the summer, and I bought my little Les Paul, my Gibson Les Paul studio, and I played my little teenage heart out. It was three sizes too small. And then it just swelled up with music and teenage angst. And I think it was emo. I was pretty emo at that time. Yeah. But that's what it was. But it wasn't enough to earn the title of Satani. So No, no. Did you still have your hair as long as you have it now, Satani? You know what? It was a little shorter. But it was okay. also, I don't know if Hanging you Hanging in your the, eyes? Or yes, was it, it was kind of like the boat. Please don't the, the tell little... me you greased it back. Oh my God, did you grease it over? No, 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 no. It okay. was very natural, no grease, ex except for, I guess, natural. Ugh. But uh, I, I yeah. showered, I showered regularly, but I had it kind of like this, you know, where it was all like that. Yes. Oh, yes. It. Yes. Did you have gauge earrings too? <laughs> no, my mom wouldn't let me get any God type did, of piercings. God did, didn't you? <laughs> my, my mom God, wouldn't let I me get any mom. piercings. <laughs> she spelled your name like shit, but she was really smart about not letting you get any piercings. <laughs> I look at those people and I'm like, I am so glad that like I don't regret my future as much as they will. Just like when they take those puppies out, it's just a hole that you stare into that just reads regret. <laughs> and if, like if, maybe a $10,000 surgery. <laughs> if you blow through the hole, it actually, it, it's like a cave. It's just regret as it goes out. <laughs> my, my drummer actually still, I had a face chat with him. He lives in Canada now, but he still has the gay earrings. This is what I wanted as a piercing though. I wanted the eyebrow you did class i got i i got a belly button ring and i still have the circle at the top of my belly button and i have not worn a belly button ring for like over 15 years and it's still there and sometimes when i'm when i'm doing the dirty with somebody new they're like oh you had a belly button ring and i'm like yeah how does everyone it's not even <laughs> a large hole how is this a thing this was the early nineties. How do you even know what that is? Like it could have been, <laughs> I could be deformed, but they all know they're just like belly button ring. It's the tiniest, it's like an ear, ear. It's the tiniest hole and everybody just knows. They're like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's you the Man, I think guys just have radar for holes as they're going and they're just like, oh, belly button, belly uh -huh. button ring. I don't know. That is so funny though. My wife has a belly button ring. I think still it's- has it? She still does. Yes. Oh my God. See, I'm like, I would re pierce. I would go through and be like, I could maybe still wear one, but where do you even get one? I don't She's know. In the nineties, you said, cause she, cause I remember listening to a podcast where you said her song of, <laughs> that you get down to is still very stereotypical, like love song, but like you, you don't have the guts to tell her like, Hey, maybe we should choose something a little more neutral. <laughs> that's oh my gosh you I, i'm glad i have one listener this is fantastic and yes that's true we need to get her up you know what though in the belly button ring it has a little design on the end you know what it is oh boy oh a velociraptor god. no it's not oh it's my not. god oh my god i was about to lose my mind and be like get your wife on here right now tell her to sign divorce papers and come to my house because I got plenty of velociraptors here. And I don't know what Stefan, who spells his name Steven, <laughs> is doing with his time. Oh my God. Oh, uh, well, I wish it was a wrap. There's no design. I can't believe I even remember this. I but anyway, 
Enough about my belly, but my wife's belly button rings and mine. Enough. I'm not going to show you mine, but Tara, thank you for coming on. Wanted to talk a little bit about you because you just have a cornucopia of comedy and entertainment, and I'm so excited to talk about it. Wanted to get to know a little bit about you. You've been in LA for, I think I heard on a podcast, 17 years ago, one year ago. So doing the math plus one, 18 years. Yes. In LA. Thank God. My mom would be so proud. She's a math teacher. So I'm very happy about this. Uh, so you originally Las Vegas, born and raised on the yeah. playground is where you spent most of your days. But did, did you start acting in Vegas or did you just go to LA and were like, you know what, I'm going to start acting? I, I wish I knew exactly what I would end up be doing, but I did not. I was mostly a singer. So I wanted to be a singer. And then I was in high school musicals in high school. And nice. then got accepted to the American Musical and Dramatic Academy out here in LA, where I majored in basically musical theater, but mostly fell in love with acting and realized I was like good at comedy. Like six months uh... in, they were just like, you <laughs> get all these comedic songs and basically scenes. And I guess it's really where I tapped into me being more of a comedic performer. And then, yeah, after I graduated, I kind of fell out of, not out of love with musical theater, but just tapped more into the acting side of it. Interesting. And that is so, that is so interesting because when I see your comedy, you've got that musical theater background where I feel like you have this presence that is damn magical and it makes me a little bit mad because I can't really possess that but you have it and a few other comedians I see have it and it just <clears throat> when I see you it, it's it doesn't matter what you're doing I'll just crack a smile or I'll, I'll start laughing and you've got this <laughs> magic to you where beyond everything else I'm sure like the writing and the <clears throat> and the practicing and and all the improv background and everything I think musical theater may have that um like, like the added, like the presence that I think you can, well, I guess you would feel it on stage, but also that you can hopefully feel it through a screen, which like, that is like the best compliment I could ever get. Is someone being like, girl, you just have a presence and me being like, yes, best compliment <laughs> ever. You, well, you do, you do. That's my present to you telling you you've got the presence. And I, I mean, you do I so, it. you do so many different types of videos too. I mean, <clears throat> I've seen the reaction videos. I've seen the unbagging. I've seen different characters like Barb. Uh, yes. H hilarious. Barb is a fan favorite. <laughs> and I, <clears throat> I love Barb. And I was going to say too, one of my favorites is the, the Tara Erickson masterclass for oh, comedy yes. and acting. Oh my, oh my God. It's so good. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to put a link to everything in the show notes, but also that video because oh, I love it. I, I heard on another podcast that you do not just the acting, obviously, but you also do the writing and the production and the editing and everything. And I was like, that is such a well put together video, especially the end scene where it shows you and the fit, the face you're making and it blends yeah. in with all and the it other blends in with all the other things. <laughs> Oh my God. You're making my life. The fact that you watch that video, it's a kind of an older video, like a year or two. I think it's like a year old. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, sometimes the editing that goes into some of my videos takes me a minute, but that is, I'm so glad that you watch that. That's like a favorite video of mine, but a lot of times me making so many different types of videos, whether it's in regards to like, I'll just decide to post a cover song or do a character thing or do a sketch or open a bag of groceries or react to a trailer it's like me not knowing how to stay in one lane. Well, I know how to stay in one lane. I don't want to is like yeah. helps, but also hurts me. Cause I'm, people are like, man, if you just did trailer reactions, you just took all those trailer reactions, put it into one channel. You just focus on that. I guarantee your channel will just, it'll just blow up. Cause I get it when people go and write, they like, <laughs> they lose, they're like, oh wait, I thought this was a trailer reaction thing. I'm, I'm going to this girl. Cause we saw that her Batman thing is 200,000 views. And then they look at my other videos, which are like 300, 500 views, depending. It just, uh -huh. it all depends. Um, my audience is so mixed up and jumbled. I still love it the way that it is. I'll never change it, but it hurts and helps me being such like a mixed bag of candy. I love that because I feel I'm, I'm in a similar vein of, 
I like to do a lot of different things. And I think it's a challenge for me is to do all these different things and continue on those different paths without being completely overwhelmed and then just stopping and giving up and getting burned out. And I feel like you consistently, I just, the voice that you said that was your critic almost sounded like the, the worst roommate ever sketch yes. that you did, which was also amazing. But I was, <laughs> I was gonna ask, I mean, with all the different things you're doing, and this is just within the realm of social media, you've also got acting and, and you're in commercials and everything, but like, how are you able to stay focused and stay on track with all of these things going on at the same time and pacing yourself so that you just don't blow up? Yeah. I mean, honestly, the, the past four days I did blow up. Like I, I had, I think an anxiety attack in coming back to LA cause I was gone for a little while over the holidays in Utah, like by myself with just a friend to get out of the LA. But it was like anxiety hit me. And I had to like, I convinced the doctor to give me an EKG. And I was like, and he's like, you're fine. He's like, maybe you should take up meditating. I'm like, mother fuck. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have time for that shit. Like normally I wake up, my anxiety is my best little friend of me. It, it kind of gets me up, gets me going. And I, I use a bullet journal specifically to answer your question. Uh -huh. I write stuff down tends to be the night before make a bunch of bullet points as to what I need to edit what ideas I might have what videos I need to finish editing and like what blog I need to write and like also other side hustle jobs I have like a bunch of them um, to like finish this video for this person or write for them yada yada. And so once I have it written down, that really helps relieve my anxiety a ton. And I haven't mm -hmm. been using that like the past couple of weeks because it's been like weird vacation time. But I also was like just hit with like weirdly the past few days of like just a rush of anxiety of being like, but also what if I have COVID and then getting a rapid test twice within three days to like <clears throat> calm me down and make me like not panic so much, which is just, I'm like, I'm an insane person. This is a lot. But I've, I've taken the past few days to kind of fuck off and watch about three movies a day. I love the movies. Um, oh, nice, nice. But normally I, I, I like it better. It makes me feel safer and more like myself when I'm working a lot and doing a lot of things when I can get up and be super productive and look at my bullet journal and like mark a million things off per day. Uh, Oh, but I man. haven't been able, I haven't been, but bullet journaling d definitely changed my life. I started that like three and a half years ago and there's a book about it. And now I just know how to do it in my own journal. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a lifesaver. Oh, that's amazing. And I was going to ask, it sounds like you just said the answer, but you handwrite it too, versus going into like Trello or some um, online thing where you write down to do's and stuff. Right. No, I have to handwrite it. That's the same way that I memorize like big bulks of, of lines and stuff. I have to read it and then handwrite all my lines down and then it's mm -hmm. locked in. Interesting. And just to the point of writing things down, I have tried to go online. I think there was like, don't forget the milk, which was an app where you could write to do's. And then there are a couple others that I tried failed at all of them. I'm just not good writing them down. There's some sort of power mm -hmm. when it comes from ink and your hand. It just makes it so much more satisfying and it just makes it a little more permanent and close to you for me. At oh, least. Yeah. So There's really no way that if I wrote down lines or wrote down things that I really wanted to remember, if I wrote them down in a computer, it just doesn't work. I have to do it by hand and always have had to do it. I've tried it being like, what if I type it over and over, like on a keyboard, it doesn't work. It has mm. to be by hand. Interesting. And then going to the point of memorizing lines, I actually was going to ask about that because I had heard on another interview with you that you were, uh, uh, you were the lead role on Twisted Nanny, Lifetime Movie Network, and which is awesome. Uh, and it was uh, a serious role. Saw quite a bit of crying, which uh, I hope you're okay. But also no, the, the, acting was, the acting was phenomenal. And I was like, holy shit, this is really good. And I had just finished going on watching all of your comedy stuff. And then I see this and I was like, wow, this person is amazing. Satani oh approves. God. Thank you, yeah. Satani. That's like, that's, uh, that means a lot. 
No, it's, it's fantastic. And um, I was going to ask because you had said you got the role, you were going to be the lead, you were going in. And then I think to filming that day or the night before you had got the lines. And they were yeah. like, yep, here's nine pages or something for you to memorize. And I was 12 gonna... pages, Satani, that's three pages more. And yes, it was 8 p.m. and I needed to be on set at 8 a.m. Oh, oh my God. God. So how did you memorize them? Was it the writing down technique? Yeah. And then yeah, I was reading it, um, reading it once, and then I just go to each and every line, write down only my lines, and then reading it again. Uh, and then writing it again. And then in the morning, I set my alarm to wake up a little bit earlier and then write them down one more time. And then uh, also one last thing that I do is I do do a voice. I do do a voice memo <laughs> in my phone that just reads the other actor's lines with time in between that I would respond to my lines. And that helps me out a lot. Oh, so that that's... I'm now learning their cues and not just my lines. Oh, that's really smart. I like that. That helps me out a ton. Damn. And that's so cool too, because like I was saying earlier, there was not just, and obviously any acting, you have to put feeling and emotion into it. But I think on the first day, there was crying involved and yes. emotion. And I, it's just amazing to know the backstory of like, yeah, I got those lines 12 hours before. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Because the, re the reviews were all great. The movie was great. It was, uh, you did good. You did good, kid. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. We were really thrown into the ringer that day one. I was like, wait, I'm sorry. We're doing this scene on today? Oh, 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 oh okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it was It was a lot. But I, I, yeah, that was one of the best, best times of my life that I'm like, oh, I'll never forget. And because it took me so long to get to a moment like that, where I actually felt like I was like, working for real and it wasn't just like a tiny commercial that like sort of comes and goes that I was at the point where I could be really grateful for it every single day that I was on set that I was just like fuck I'm so glad to be here even though it's a lot of work and a lot of hard work and like longer hours I was just like well I'm exactly where I wanted to be and I'm glad that it took me so long to get here because I can be ever so grateful for it mm, wow and I was gonna say too you this the filming was about two weeks right mm -hmm. they, yeah and and i was gonna ask because the movie about a widowed mother trying to find a nanny for her kids finds a very mm -hmm. conniving nanny and uh there's it's kind of dark and i was gonna ask does that start to get to you and just really drill into your soul after a week two weeks because that's just a lot of concentration on being this character that's frazzled and stressed and worried for their kids. Yeah, Holy luckily God. I'm always frazzled and stressed. So it's just like a <laughs> part of me that I go, oh great, and now my kids are being taken away from me. And action. Um, it's, it's, it's funny, there's like so many parts of being an actor and being a comedian, which I'm sure, you know, even on this podcast, plenty of comedians have shared like, sort of like dark depths of your soul that you have to get into just from being a tiny child and, and recognizing mm -hmm. comedy and becoming mm -hmm. just funny naturally because of certain things that happened to you in your life. It wasn't because everything was like bright and, and great and a bunch of rainbows around you. It tends to come from a little bit of pain, a little bit of fear, a little bit of like a conjunction of, of things that people may look at and go, oh, that's tough. But you're like, no, this tough jar of candy gave me like the, the ability to see things in a very comedic way, which is is great. Hmm. And I think that's why when I see a lot of comedians in, um, you know, just a standard drama, they do a, quite a phenomenal job and they're really, really like subtle and so believable that I'm just like, oh, they're so good. Um, and uh, yeah, that makes me happy that you, you believed me. I mean, my main thing as an actor, I'm like, I just want people to believe what I do and be like, I believe every part of that. And that makes me super happy. Oh, for sure. And on all of your reels, I, I so many different characters and I thought you were great in all of them. But it's funny that you noted that too about comedic or comedians doing a good job in dramatic roles. I remember an interview with Vince Gilligan, who was the writer slash creator of Breaking Bad and how he was talking about Bill Burr it playing a role. And, and he did a, I thought he did a great job. And he was saying that comedians make some of the best dramatic actors 
because of exactly like you said, they're just able, they've tapped into dark places. Maybe they've made light out of them in their jokes and their stand up and stuff, but like they're able to really get in touch with those feelings and access them fast and, and do a really good job. And so yeah. that's what I thought when I saw you, I was like, wow, she's, it reminded you reminded me of Bill Burr essentially. Oh my God. I love him. He was just on the new episode of the Mandalorian. And that was, that's another clear, clear vision of like, he is so good. There is like the, he's so subtle and he's like, am I? And I remember at the end, he looks at the Mandalorian and says like, I think he says, thank you. Or one last line, it's like three words. And I was like, fuck yes. I believe, I believe it all. And there's, there are even some characters in the Mandalorian that are really good actors. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I believe that, that, that part that they said or what they're going through. I don't know if I believe them hundred percent, but like Bill Burr did such a great job. I was so proud of him and I was so happy. I mean, spoiler alert for people who haven't seen the Mandalorian, but in the first if season, they haven't, you're fucking way behind, man. Yeah. Shame, care. shame, shame on you. Shame. Yes. Shame bell. And the first season was so good. And I thought, if, I think at first you think that Mando kills everybody that betrayed him, but then he leaves them all alive. And I was like, oh, are they going to bring Bill Burr back? Probably not. And then lo and behold, season two. There he was. Back. Stellar job, Mr. Yeah. Burr. Yeah. So believable. Like also so funny in the, in the moments that he needed to be comedic. Yet also just so grounded and so real. And I just, I loved it. Yes. Amazing job, Bill Burr, but he's not the guest on this podcast. So kindly fuck off. It's, Bill Burr. Yeah. Fuck off. I <laughs> reminded S Satani of Bill Burr, but Bill Burr can go away. Cause it's about me now. Tara Erickson. Exactly. Tara Erickson. <sighs> so <laughs> I was going to ask one last question or maybe two, I'm not sure <laughs> yet, but before we get into the advice and self-help, et cetera, but yeah. I know the pandemic's been tough. You were just talking about some anxiety and a possible panic attack that just happened. How are you and what's keeping you <laughs> positive? <laughs> what, what are you looking forward to the most once things get sunny and cheery and COVID free again? Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to the most is just auditioning in person. And I never thought I would say that because, oh, fuck driving to Santa Monica. I hate it. <laughs> but me being in a room with someone and like performing for someone who can see me physically in a room, I think will do me a lot of favors. I play a lot of mom roles, even though I am not a mom. Um, I book that a lot commercially. And there's been so many commercials that have just passed me by where they're like, you need to shoot in your own home. Needs to be like a nice kitchen or needs to look like a nice home. And my freaking apartment looks uh. like a 14 year old boy's wet dream. It's covered in <laughs> dinosaurs and sharks and bright colored lockers. And like, it'll just never work in any commercial ever. And me trying to send in self tapes is just an automatic failure. Uh, uh, honestly, me putting up like a tiny green screen but there's like peeking out a dinosaur in the corner. It's just, it's no good for me. <laughs> I need to get back in a room where they're like, she's great. She plays a young mom, believable. Like it, that would, that would make me very happy. And I also think I, I might be slated, which uh, crossing my fingers on this one to do another um, lifetime movie, which would be awesome. Hopefully in like later February with um, a, a very good friend. Her husband is a director and I won't name any names or say anything. So I don't like uh, break the curse. Cause we're like, we're not celebrating until we sign the contract, but um, yes. it would be great. I would, I would get to play, uh, you know, a bit of a badass, which is awesome. Totally up my nice. alley. That's a thing that I would love to do. And also I am shooting a short film called age is a killer with one of my very good friends, Erica Barden. If you guys look at my YouTube or Instagram or Twitter, you'll see her. She's all over. We do sketches together. She is a brilliant writer. She wrote, uh, I forced her. I was like, write a short film for us. Cause I was like, I was just in a 48 hour film festival. Okay. These people came up with a great script, shot it. It looks amazing. I was, I was lucky, lucky enough to be like nominated for a best actor award for that, which is awesome. I was like, we need to be making this happen on our, on our own with, cause she's also a great actor and she's also a great writer and she wrote a thing and hopefully we'll shoot that also in February or March. And that'll That's be uh, tons of fun. Oh my God, that's amazing. And I'll be looking out for it. And I, yes. I can't wait to see it. 
I think I saw her in one of your videos like three years ago. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing this right. I think you guys did a mukbang at Jollibee's. Oh, that's Amy Castle. Love her to death. Um, uh, yeah, Amy Castle is like a foodie and she also has her own YouTube channel, but yes, that Jollibee video is one of the, my very first like viral videos. People loved it when I went to Jollibee and ate food and commented about it. <laughs> Love it. It's like so popular. People are like, when are you going to go back to Jollibee? You didn't put gravy on the rice. And also you need to get the Jolly burger and get it without cheese. And that shake that you got, you didn't mix it up. It had. <laughs> you're supposed to mix those in how many comments staying oh is three God. years old every day being like you didn't do this certain thing for jolly bee food you need to go back and fix it it's crazy oh <laughs> my god yeah that is so funny i actually left a comment on there too i was like you didn't mix the shake you gotta ah! mix the shake no i'm kidding I've never been to Jolly Bee's, so I don't know. I've heard about it. And we actually, I think we have two or three now in Phoenix, yes. but I, I've i heard, I looked oh at Google God. reviews. Don't, don't don't look at the reviews, okay? Satani, you got to go. You take your wife, you take your brother, you take, you take Ari. I don't know. Take your podcast. You go in the I'll, car. I'm turning, turning East Coast so you, so you listen to me. You know what I mean? You gotta I got get you. In the, you got to get in the fucking car. You go to Jolly Bee. <laughs> you get that fucking chicken. They call it jolly joy chicken joy for a reason it brings you straight up joy forget about kfc you like kfc i like salty food too like salty fried chicken <laughs> can all fuck off because i tell you jolly bee it's like the most moist most like seasoned chicken i've ever had i love it you gotta go you gotta do it get the shake get all the things but you gotta put aside like a hundred dollars to do the thing to do the juice oh my god because you're gonna get so many things but honestly I, one time i went i got like like a burger and I also got a shake and I got their apple pie and I got a side of rice and extra it was like only forty dollars but if you a hundred dollars you buy everything on the menu Boom. holy shit. you know what I'm starting to think that the only reason Jolly Bees is around is because people go there and film themselves eating it and <laughs> they buy the whole menu and then that keeps them in business it's and then true. the other ones they just try and prove them wrong to say oh you gotta stir the shake and so then yes. they film themselves doing it and then there's a rebuttal I don't know, but you know what? I'll try thing. it. Good. I'll try it. Good. What, what, what specific, I will dedicate an item to you. What is something that oh I need god, to try? Oh my god, this is, oh, it's so exciting. Oh my god. Satani, what an honor. Okay. I'm just going to say, you just got to get the chicken joy like meal and you got to get mashed potatoes with gravy. And okay. Yeah. Why did you do the lip thing? You don't like, you don't like fried chicken. You don't like mashed. What, what, what do you eat? Are you I a vegan? Uh, I, uh, no. Well, you heavens are. no. Heavens no. You're a vegetarian? I'm, no, 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 no. I eat all the meats. The It's just mashed potatoes. I like, you don't like the like, consistency. I like, a, no, I like them like Ma used to make. It's just fast food potatoes seem off to me. No, no, like- no, not a Jollibee. Not a Jollibee, Satani. You said you were going to listen to me. See, now I got to dip back into this and tell you, you got to get the chicken joy with the fucking mashed potatoes with the gravy. <laughs> if you don't, I'm going to come and fucking find you. I know you live in Phoenix now, so fuck <laughs> off. No, that's what you should really get. You should, You need to get that. The white rice is also amazing. Sometimes when I don't like we don't have a lot of Chinese food in LA, which I, I hate, but uh, I sometimes Damn. I'll just drive through Jollibee and get the white rice and it's great. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I'll try it. I'll try yeah. all of it. I'll bring my, try I'll it. bring a hundred, hundred big ones. Bring 100 100 and you have to get that. the spaghetti. That's a, gonna... another thing. They have spaghetti there and it has cut up hot dogs in it. Like your mom used to make in the nineties. Oh, uh, no, no. My ma, she made the, the fucking real thing. She yeah. made the fucking pasta carbonara. No, I don't oh, know. Oh, I'm where that sorry. Is. You were so lucky to have fresh pasta carbonara while the rest of us are eating macaroni and cheese out of a fucking cardboard box with cut up hot dogs or some extra protein. So we survived, Satani. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I, okay, I will try it. I'm going to take a hundred of the stim check. And I'm just yes. going to put it towards Jolly Yes! Bees. I will just give them my stimmy check and be like, feed me. Feed me <laughs> Jolly Bees. Make me Jolly. 
Oh, I'm going to forever call it the stimmy check. This is good. This is good. <laughs> the stimmy. This is good. Oh, this, that sounds like we're getting tested for STDs. You've got Satani, you've got the stimmy and it's not yeah, good. Yeah, it does. Prescribe but you. You've got the stimmy. <laughs> it's good. I'm going to be like, where's my stimmy check? That's great. Please tell me you tweeted that out, Satani. You got, you got to be, you got to claim it. I'm not going to steal it, but use it. I'll give you credit. Oh, please. You, no, no. It's yours to take. You can have it. <laughs> stimmy, stimmy, oh, Ren and stimmy. I don't know, but no, nah. no. Yeah, I know. I stimmy lost check. it. I'm sorry. It went stimmy flat. Stimmy check. check. Satani. Stimmy check. Stimmy, yeah. stimmy dipping. That's going in and finding some of your money. Oh from my the God. Check. Yes, it is. Oh, I love it so hard. <laughs> Oh God. All right. Well, this has been a blast so far and we haven't even gotten to the advice. So we're going to, we're going to get to it, jump into it. I almost fell through. I need to stop eating holiday cookies. I almost fell through my <laughs> second floor. We're going to get into the advice, Tara Erickson. But before we do, I like to get us nice and inspired with an inspirational quote. And so mm -hmm. I've got one specially plucked and prepared for us. But before I give my inspirational pasta with cut up hot dogs, I want to see <laughs> if, do you have any inspirational quotes, Tara Erickson, that just really help you find the light in the dark days? <laughs> yeah, it's a little long. I'm going to read it. It's like one of those statements that, that comes on like a a metal sign or like a wooden sign, you know, like an inspirational like phrase. So here, here we go. Never be ordinary. Never be mediocre. Be a fucking lion. Fuck it. Be a lion. Take no shit. Set goals. Smash them. Destroy them. Be a stronger version of you. Show people who the fuck you are. Never apologize for being awesome. You go, motherfucker. The end. Oh, my God. That's my favorite Dr. Seuss quote. I love... <laughs> <laughs> who, <laughs> who who was that that's a, that I, I feel fierce now because of that right me too i'm like and especially when it says be a fucking wolf and then it says fuck it be a lion i'm like yeah! <laughs> <laughs> i love I, it that's ah oh, i love it i feel pumped now i feel like i could run maybe not a 5k but at least around the block yes me too i could run maybe up and down the stairs once come back watch a movie fierce <laughs> I could just blaze through Mandalorian season two, just like that. <laughs> Something fierce. Yes. Oh my God. Sorry. I wasn't swatting you or the quote away. There was a fluff. I don't know. Sure. Sure. I don't know where this fluff came from. I don't have any pillows in here. I know how you feel about my jolly bee fluff. You don't believe it, <laughs> but you will once you've had that sketty. Oh, I'm going to stimmy dip right into Jolly Bee, and then I'm just going to take that mashed potatoes, spaghetti. Yes. Chicken. Rice. All of it. Yep. Oh. Delicious. I'm going to have a carbohydrate hangover afterwards. That you sounds... will. You might, you might also have a Pepsi hangover because they do not serve Coke at Jolly Bee. You ask for a Coke and they're like, we only have Pepsi. And I'm like, right. I should uh, learn that my 15th time going through the drive-thru and I never have. Damn. Do they, they don't even say is Pepsi okay. They're just like, you're going to have Pepsi. Just like a Jedi. Pepsi I think they're fine. like, they, I literally go and a, I'll get a Diet Coke or a Coke and they go Diet Pepsi. And I'm like, Oh, right. Yes. <laughs> oh, my they're not God. fucking around there. They don't have time to waste. They're like, they're trying to serve chicken to people here in LA. There's a, at dinner time, no joke. There is a line that blocks traffic on Beverly Boulevard over here. It's a whole wow. thing. You got to get in there, Satani. You got to get the simi check, get in there, get Jolly B in. This is a phenomenon. This is mm -hmm. a, is this, uh, this is from, where is it from? Philippines, right? Yes. Wow. A Philly, yeah. a Philly phenomenon, a phenomenon. I don't know. Phenomenon. Yeah. That should be an item. God. It should be. Mm. I bet you it is. And I just don't know it. Cause I just go the chicken and the rice and the other thing, please. They're like, you mean the phenomenon, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And Precisely. a Coke, uh, Pepsi, obviously Pepsi. Pepsi. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. <laughs> Amazing. Well, Hey, thank you, Tara Erickson for the quote. It was fantastic and probably one of the top 10 out of all the 200 episodes that i've had so. man at first when i was like you're a wolf i was like eh. and there's like fuck it you're a lion i was like yes. hell yeah so, yeah you got you got roaring oh god i'm roaring and ready to go all right 
this inspirational quote that I have, you've listened to the podcast. So, you oh, know, yes, I is, have. <clears throat> this is no ordinary person. In fact, this is no person at all. This is a robot named Inspirobot that uses yeah. AI to take some of the wisest words known to man or woman and just mash them together. Mash them together mash. for an no, inspirational quote. No, no. You, be That's a right. fucking lion, Satani. I'm not a here. wolf. I'm a lion. Ah, yes. Fuck. Okay. All right. I'm feeling raw. Feeling it. Okay. So we're gonna try and decipher this one. This one. This week. It says, "It's up to you to remind yourself that you are painful." Oh God. Yes. This is true. <laughs> Except I don't have to remind myself. I wake up and just go, you are such a fucking fuss. You're a pain <laughs> in the ass. People like you. Thank Christ. People love you. Thank whatever. But like Jesus Christ, shut up. That's, this is my daily, my daily talk to myself. Yeah. I'm a pain. So are you Satani. I know. I have to tell myself I every day. Sometimes yeah, sometimes I'm like, you're a lion, a really loud lion. You lion. need to bring it down to wolf and calm the fuck down. Yeah. And sometimes I just got to bring it down. Sometimes you got to be like that Animorphs book where the kid turns into a lion step by step. It's like, sometimes you got to be wolf. Sometimes you got to transform into lion, but you are a pain in the ass. And you yes. got to. You got to remind yourself that you are painful. What a crazy quote. I actually is, really, I really like that. It dips into my like really melodramatic side, which is very often fed into in my blog, Talk and Tara. A lot of it is like life experiences that are like, uh, I sometimes write about them melodramatically with a, uh, a bright swing to it at the end. But still, oh man, you should remind yourself that you are painful. I actually really love that quote. <laughs> you know, I, at first glance, I thought maybe it's telling you to trim your toenails because Ooh, sometimes mine painful. might get just a little long. I'll be snuggling with the wife. Mm -hmm. We'll be just in a cuddle puddle of ecstasy. Mm -hmm. And then my foot will just try to gently caress her scrape toenails. God, what an amateur move, Satani. <laughs> She's Brazilian and you're not cutting your toenails. You have learned nothing, my friend. That's probably the, the grossest detail I've ever shared on this podcast. It's that so is... bad. That, like, I think that's happened to me when I was also in a cuddle puddle with a guy, like an ex, and I was like, dude, <laughs> you need to cut your, your toenails. Like, what is happening? Uh, what's going on down there? I, I feel like this should turn into a public service announcement. Guys, yes. do a nail check. Remind and yourself. trim your pubes. Correct. They Those don't can need also... to all be gone, but a little trim. Come on. Yes, a little upkeep. You don't want it like a fucking Louisiana thicket. You want a nice garden with a picket fence. That's what you, you want. Thank you. <sighs> well, good. Thank you, Inspire Bob, for that wonderful quote. I feel inspired. <laughs> Rar. Now, we're going to move on to some questions. Let's this, do it. <laughs> this first question, <laughs> it's found by our fan, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. And uh, she found it on Reddit. It says, <clears throat> visible tattoos in a funeral industry? This might seem very random, but would you say tattoos being in a funeral service operative will be acceptable? Basically, I have one full sleeve, one partial sleeve, both thumbs tattooed, and all fingers tattooed on my right hand. I've always wanted to work in the funeral industry to help people at a great time of need. But I went on to have my little girl. She is now four. I feel ready to get back to work. And I really wanted to peruse a career in the funeral industry, but now I feel like I do not have a chance because of my tattoos. So any help will really be appreciated. X. Oh my God. Fuck that girl. Your tattoos remind everybody of pure regret. I'm sure there's a few <laughs> on your arm that you are like, I didn't, this was a mistake. Even if you, oh, you love all of them, most people are going to be looking at them and go, well, thank God I didn't get that tattoo. And what it's going to do is going to send them out of that room, running and screaming, going, thank God I'm alive. And I didn't get a, a terrible <laughs> tattoo when I was 18. And now I got to go fucking live life. You are inspiring people left and right with those tattoos. Every tattoo has a story. Honestly, people have tattoos. They really do. Every tattoo has a story. And 
you're probably going to be the spice of life at those funeral after parties. Those are a thing, right? After parties, they hang in the parlor and you're, you still have to be there and be like, yeah, I take the body away soon, but not until you're done. Do you want to see my sweet tats first? And they're like, exactly. No, we, and we they, don't. <laughs> Some of them are going to be really sad though. And be go like, yeah. Tell me the story about that one. Is it about I, your long lost love? And she's like, no, fuck it. That one time I got drunk in New Orleans, best time of my life, had a one night stand. <laughs> Haven't forgotten him since. And they're gonna again, go running out of that funeral parlor. No longer gripped with sadness, but with pure, uh, just vibrance to live. That's right. Relief that they <laughs> don't have a stinky ink like you do. So yeah. I think that is probably the case or Maybe there will be people that you can share your misery with. And you guys, if there's another person with a sleeve of tats, then you can be like, hey, I'll show you my sleeve if you show me your sleeve. Yours. And then you can swap tat stories. Yes. Tat, and you should. Tat, tattletales. Tattletales is good, Satani. Also, uh, she good. added in. Fi- <laughs> it's not good, but also she added in pictures of famous people because for some odd ass reason, people respect famous people more, added that to the end of her resume, right? Her resume is there. And then she, people get to a picture and they're like, oh my God, M- M- Meryl Streep has a tattoo on the, her lower back. Wow. And then, you know, she's like, yeah, you see my tattoo? No big deal. Meryl Streep has some. And then, I don't know, maybe that could work in the back end of her resume. That's the, I like that. That is a good, a good thing to do. I think you could also just could you cover them up with, if your sleeve, you've got the, yeah. well, all the, with the glove, right-hand glove, you can pull a Michael Jackson. <laughs> I'm here to take the body now. <laughs> Just moonwalk the casket out. But you could <laughs> cover up them tats and you could conceal your zeal. Yeah. And I don't know why I'm trying so to So Donnie comes in with his simplest fucking solve, which is just wear a long sleeve shirt and some rings to cover them up. Also, there's a lot of tattoo makeup out there. Actors every day have are covered, like have full sleeves and they have to, all they do is wear a long sleeve shirt in every commercial they're in. And if there's any on their hands, they just cover them up with makeup. Not that she'd want to do that. Like, girl, I want oh. you to live your full life in the funeral parlor, but also, Satani is right. You just you probably have to wear long sleeves in a funeral parlor anyway, right? Oh, that's true. Yeah, you'll probably have to wear a suit. So the only things that'll be showing are your fingers. And if you wear a leather glove, then I think she's not a serial murderer. Satani. Oh, oh, she hasn't sent the people to their grave there. She's there to just welcome them into the next chapter, hopefully without a leather glove, and just get into being a ring person. Maybe a Mickey Mouse glove. Would that be more? That'll do. I'm a Disney well, fan. Welcome to the wake. Huh? And oh, then... <laughs> that's terrifying. <laughs> I changed my mind. <laughs> right this way. Huh? Oh, God, and, that's scary. Uh, yeah, maybe that's a uh, different character. <sighs> maybe go goofy. Go horse. So Ooh. if you're not going to do that, then I think you could just wear them. You, you'll cover the long sleeves with your long sleeve attire. Mm-hmm. The hands you might have to show, as long as they're not dumb tattoos, I think you'll be fine. Yeah, as long as it doesn't spell like fuck with F-U-C-K across each finger, I think you'll be fine. But then right. again, I don't know. That's People probably need a fuck after a funeral to like relieve the sadness and stress. Isn't that what people do when they're sad? I don't so, know. We have- so may- <laughs> So spell fuck and then question mark on the thumb. Yes. So you're like, fuck. And they're All like, she needs yes. to do is add a, add a question mark. And then they can pound it if they want yes. And then uh, <clears throat> no pound pound. pound. Yeah, no pounding if they don't want it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, I feel like we have. We've adequately- solved all of her problems. Yes, I feel like it. We've, we've um, definitely helped this person. So moving on, I've got a new segment here. This one is called Positive Spin. And Tara Erickson, I've added this one because there are so many times when problems come our way where we start to think of the negative. Oh, no, I don't have any pickles. Oh, no, uh, I have never been to Polywags or I forgot what the Polynesian place is called. Jollibee. Jollibee. 
And so you start to think of these negatives, but instead, if you start to think of positives, you're training your mind to overcome obstacles more quickly. So what I've done is I've created negative scenarios and then you, Terry Erickson, are going to help me find positive spins on these negative things. Oh my God, I love it. Barb might have to come in. This The voice of Barb sounds like, hey, everybody, it's me, Barb. And Barb <laughs> always has a... She always has a really positive outlook on life. So we might have to tap into Barb because she, her brain works in different ways. Even though she is me, seriously, I'm like, yeah, isn't Barb so positive? I talk about her like she's a different person. So let's get into it. We'll see what I say oh, and maybe what Barb says. I, I love Barb, by the way. She's the and, best. Uh, she's such a good character. <sighs> this is a very random question going back to you were saying that you play moms sometimes. Mm -hmm. I have never thought about this, but do you, I know in recent months you've had the bangs and then I saw some reels where it was more to the side or even parted. Do you, if you're going for a mom role, is the, are they looking for a specific hairstyle or does any hairstyle go? I mean, I just have to go in like with bangs in my hair because that's how my headshots are. And also... I mean, sometimes I'll swipe my bangs, but I think that like the bangs look doesn't necessarily help me in the mom factor. A lot of moms that I see or roles that I see that are booking, like don't, bangs is such a specific look with long hair. My look is so specific that they either have to go, yes, bingo, she's our girl, or they're going to go with somebody else that has like maybe shorter hair or a little bit more of like, I don't know, a mom haircut because I kind of don't. But um, oh, yeah, because my headshots look like how they look with bangs. I have to kind of go in looking like that. So I don't really have a choice. Sometimes I'll do a side swoop, but that's, I still feel like I look the same and it maybe might look a little more mom-like. I don't know. I can, you know what? I actually kind of see that looking a little more mom-like and I know <laughs> nothing about moms except for my own, but I think the bangs is less mom-like. And then if you move it to the side a little bit, it's a little more mod, like older, like, oh, you, she could be a mom. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I could see you with a glass of rosé and being like, oh, I just picked up the kids after school for <laughs> the day. So I, sorry for that random ass question, but I just had it in the top of my head. I it's no, it's you. a good question. People are like, how do you, you know, you, you must get, I'm like, yeah, I think a lot of my roles are very specific, meaning I lose out a lot of roles because of the bangs and the longer hair. But I also mm -hmm. get it because of this. I have a specific look, which is good because I'd rather play badass, cool characters than like younger girlfriends, young mom type deal. So mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. uh, maybe my hair is feeding into like hopefully what I want to do more. So that's really cool. And I had never thought about how that could affect casting and getting roles. And it is, yeah. I love they that swiped you are them real quick on Twisted Nanny. They were like, we got to get her bangs all the way to the side. And I was like, I hate it. And when I look at that movie, I'm like, God, why do they have to swipe the bang so hard? But like, that was a thing. They were like, we can't have her look like how she looks with like her bangs, just normal. They had to be like, she needs to look like a regular old school mom. I did see that in one of the reviews too. They were like four out of five stars. We took off one because the bangs were swiped hard. Like yeah. They were in the normal, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so great oh uh, but i'm gonna I go up there and write it so that no one ever takes a comb to my bangs again <laughs> your your bangs are badass though and i don't yes. know that many the old the last actress that comes to mind was what's her nuts the to steal your phrase the oh my god yeah is from, it is it uh new girl yes 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 yeah, yeah. We're both blanking on her name, you know, Zoe Deschanel. Yes, um, Zoe Deschanel. Yes, right. I either get her or or um, Natasha Leggero, even though I don't think Natasha has bangs mm. anymore. I don't know though, but uh, yeah, those two. Nice, nice. Yeah. All right, coming back to positive spin. Let's got a couple bad it. bad scenarios. The first one, you have you ever had a stuffy nose, Tara Erickson or Barb? God, every day of my life. Oh, shit, because this was going to be, you have a stuffy nose for every day of your life. Oh, shit. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> neti pot is really is great. Don't use it every day, though, because there was one time I went and the doctor was like, I think you're using neti pot a little too much. And I was like, oh, shit, you're not supposed to do it every day. And he's like, sometimes that salt can get stuck up in there and give you an infection. And I was like, motherfucker. 
Oh, um, shit. And he was yeah. like, are you are you on the pickle juice again, Tara? <laughs> we've got the neti pot. We've got the pickle juice. I'm always Damn. on the pickle juice, doctor. Move on. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Damn. Uh, I didn't know. I I love neti pots though. They are yeah, cleansing. They're great. Oh my God. They're the best. Also okay. day quill, even when you're not sick is so useful. Oh. So useful. Just oh. clears you out, makes you feel good. Even if you don't need Tylenol aspirin in your system, it still is like, ah, oh, all right. Acetophenamin, I think is what we call it. Uh, uh, feeling good. Getting me nice. juiced up. Nice. It finds a, it finds something to fix or optimize. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, you got a rusty, you got a sore throat, you got a sore shoulder. We're going to yep. fix that. Acetaminophen. There you go. Nice. Also, I would just say, I talk about a tear catcher that I tell people to do. You take tissues, you tape underneath when you go into a sad movie. It's what I tell my idiot army to do. It's called a tear catcher. I invented it. Copyright Tara Erickson. But we could just also, it would work with a nose catcher, a, you know, booger catcher, maybe we'd call it. You just have to shove the tissue up in there, tape it at the bottom for the post-nasal leakage. It's going to obviously leak out around the tissue inside, have it catch it. And, uh, you know, just switch it every so often, maybe once a day, you know, and honestly, if you don't like people, it's good to have, to have a booger catcher on your face. They'll just probably steer clear. And using a bright colored deck duct tape to also tape it on there. Kind of a cool look if, oh, if you're badass. not, you know, cool look, but also people are like, we don't know what's going on there. So let's v- steer clear. And it's like, yeah, thank God. <laughs> That's right. God, I'd rather hang out with the chick with tattoos over here. Yeah. Uh, at the funeral. Yeah. At the funeral and in- funeral industry. I didn't know there was a whole industry involved. It's, Me neither. Uh, but six feet under was a big hit for a reason, I guess. Oh, that's right. Oh my gosh, man. Well, I, I love that. I also love the booger catcher. A, I was thinking of other names for it, a snot stop or a nose rain drain. Snot stopper is good. Oh wait, what was the second thing you just said? The nose rain drain. Because your nose rain gets drained. Oh, Satani, this is good. Except we're not draining it. You're draining it with the neti pot, but we're catching it. That's right. That's right. A snot yeah. stop, I think. Snot stopper. Okay. There okay. we go. Good, good, good. Oh, all right. Well, okay. This next, this next scenario, <laughs> you're very positive. You always whistle when you breathe out of your nose. So you have the option of mouth breathing, or you have the option of whenever you breathe out of your nose. God, you know what? I'm an, I'm a, I'm a person who sighs a lot and I don't even, there's nothing wrong. I'm just like, ah. But now that means if I sigh, I can't breathe in through my nose. No, no, it does. Because I can still breathe in through my nose, sigh out of my mouth. So I don't know. You just become a deep sigher. Sighing is, is good. It's a stress reliever. God, you can never breathe out of your nose. A mouth breather. And man, you really got to brush your teeth a lot. This is, this, this is, there's a lot of issues involved, Satani. There's, there's a lot of lefts and rights and alleyways that we might have to explore. I don't know. There are a lot of canals that we really might have to go down. I'm going to go with mouth breather. Forget about it. Because if I'm not able to whistle a tune out of my nose, we just, we're not allowed to exist. Can't do it. Mm, That's fair. That's fair. And then the last scenario is you can only communicate through whistles. You can't talk anymore. All you get, if it's just... (laughs) So that would make this podcast uh, very interesting. Yeah, that's only the humpback whales would listen in that case. (laughs) There is quite an audience there, yeah. I do do love love a good humpback whale sing-song conversation. You know what I mean? I could just tap into, I don't know, get back into scuba diving and and just live down there for a while. Oh, man. I'm from Arizona, so I barely even know what one looks like. We just have sand and And salamanders. Yeah, and cacti here, saguaros. Sad lives. Yeah, it's very, very sandy, very dry. but Very sad. Very sad. But (laughs) but humpbacks sound very cool. And if we could communicate with them, that might be pretty sweet. That might be pretty good. You know, they're they're the gentle giant of the sea. Well, that's the blue whale, isn't it? God. Again, now, Arizona. Now we just I have, need to cancel me. I've, 
I have no idea. All I know is that tuna is the chicken of the sea. I love how we nominate things. Like the sea just isn't good enough. And so they're like, <laughs> oh, well, it's kind of, it's like the chicken of the sea. Because if it's just a tuna, you're like, mm, gross. But humpback whales. Also, humpback is very, it almost sounds like a Fergie song. Yeah, so, it does. Which is, I think, why they're so popular, honestly. Oh. Uh... Because, I mean, you know, Fergie's, her keys definitely reached the seas. That was a rhyme. You're welcome. Oh! And. Tara Erickson. The humpback whales, they're hearing the rhymes. They're hearing it down there. And they're going, oh, who is that? (laughs) And then they're like, it's Fergie. And now they're big fans. And it's a whole thing down, down there. It does take a while. So when she sings in 2008, they hear it in 2000 and late. (laughs) <laughs> so it does. <laughs> ah, beautiful. All right. Well, I think that we are more positive thinkers now because of this. So that was very creative ways of dealing with sinus problems and mm-hmm. whistle, whistling only. So we've got, we're going to close it up with the last question. All right. Then, then, then we're done. All right. This one is from our fan, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. He found it on Reddit. He says, <clears throat> I need help with my unconscious friend's gas money. I am the only one in my friend group that has their license in a car, so I am always the driver for my friends. For a person that only works in the summer and has to stretch this money out over the rest of the year, gas money adds up. All of my friends have no problem pitching for gas except for one. Out of all my friends, this is the one that seems he's always asking, can we go for a ride? On these rides, he mooches my nick and my gas. And don't get me started when he asks me to get the food. Is there any advice you can give to help me slap my friend back into reality that owning a car ain't cheap? Oh, my God. Okay, so Barb Barb has advice. (laughs) Barb is going to say, you still have to be a good friend. So what you can do, I don't know what he meant by nicks. I feel like he meant snacks. So you got to go over there with very low gas and you drive by and you go, hi guys, I know you wanted to go for a ride, but man, I don't have any gas money. I'm running out of gas fast. And then you're like, but I know you guys normally eat my snacks too, along with my gas, wink, wink. (laughs) But so I'm just going to leave you with the snacks for today and Oh man, I guess you guys should say a prayer and hope I make it home. <laughs> and then you, you throw you throw the snacks out the window. And then they're like, what the fuck? And they're like, we had plans to go to Disneyland. And you're just like, sorry, uh, only enough gas to hopefully make it home. Let's hope I don't die in the street corner. I'm <laughs> up with heroin. Oh God. And you slowly roll away in neutral. And then hopefully they're like, man, maybe we should like come up with a gas fund. <laughs> oh fuck those God. friends also why don't they also have a vehicle are they just like total like loser fest who haven't gotten their their driver's license yet please don't tell me this is a bunch of 30 year olds that's true he didn't mention his age so he could be 30 to 50 years old and the friends are just licenseless you gotta get new friends buddy oh they gotta i mean there's bikes those are a thing anybody ever watch mm. et those kids are riding around all around getting places quick on bikes. That's right. Stranger Things as well. Man, they were cruising around that. Time. Cruising. 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 You got to get a bike or you just got to You got to pack it with snacks. The good snacks that they all like. You throw them out the window and you're like, that's our last time you're going to get any of those snacks unless we come up with a gas fund. <laughs> okay, see you then. I love Barb so much. She <laughs> She's- so great so positive so sweet she's like a lion she's she so is good. she's the best oh, <laughs> and i love her solution too i feel like if you just take it to the extreme mm-hmm. the brink of death yes then i think your friends are going to realize your friend there's only one all the other friends are complying they're like hey buddy you can have some gas money but that one friend mooching your i don't know what nick is nick maybe <laughs> Oh, maybe my Nick. Yeah. In that case, you just throw out one cigarette and you're like, that's the last year Nick's until we can get to more gas, buddy. 
Oh okay. no, no more Knicks. Give, yeah. <laughs> give him a Knicks, Knicks, Knicks on the Knicks. Why? That's such a weird slang to me. I'm very caught up on it. Bro, I do not, not know what Knicks is either, but I think you're probably right in saying that it's, it's probably nicotine, but I don't know. Maybe they just don't know how to smell snacks. I thought maybe they just forgotten <laughs> S and also didn't know how to spell it. Oh, that is very true. Yes, <laughs> that could be. They could have misspelled snacks. I, in my heart of hearts, I like to think that these kids have just completely come up with, although hopefully they're not smoking because I would could hope be so bad for you. But if they were, they're going to call it something badass. So if they die, they die of Nicks instead of Nicks, man. Get, hook me up with some Nicks. Can I get them Marlboro Nicks? <laughs> Nicks. Yeah. Oh, woof. Yes. Don't pick up smoking. It makes you smell. Right. Right. Exactly. Also, it kills you is the most important part, but also it's stinky. Yeah. And that's, I mean, really to everybody else, the most important thing. That's what I'm if saying. You, if you got a stench, you can't hang out with the cool kids. You can't be a Satani. You'll do, you can't even be a Stefan. You'll be a Steven. Yeah. A Steven smoking or, the Knicks. Or an Eric. Oh, or an Eric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be an Eric. Woof. No, no. No, well, it's a shame. Well, sir, I or ma'am, I'm not sure who this is, but I feel like you've been you've been advised. I need you've like been advised. Stamp. You've been advised. You've been self-help. You're <sighs> welcome. <laughs> Tara Erickson, it's been and Barb, it's been such a pleasure to have you on this podcast as a guest. I feel like you're just a big ball of inspiration not just on the questions, but learning about everything you do and being such a prolific Pauline. And such a good, <laughs> where can, where can people find you? What have you got going on? What have you got to plug? Let it rip. Yeah. Oh my God. I would love it. If you guys would subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's youtube.com slash Tara Erickson. That's T A R A E R I C K S O N. Um, I also have a website, the, or the, whatever you want to say it, the Tara Erickson.com, T-H-E-T-A-R-A-E-R-I-C-K-S-O-N.com. Oh. Um, and I also write a blog. It's called talkintara.com. It's about life, love, fun, loss. Um, that's T-A-L-K-I-N, no G, T-A-R-A.com, talkintara.com. I write a blog. Um, yeah, I'm on, I'm on Instagram all the time. I'm at Tara Erickson on there. I tweet a lot. I'm at the Tara Erickson on Twitter. I'm on TikTok as well as at Tara dash Erickson. Just, you can Google me. A bunch of my stuff is on my stuff. You can look at my IMDb and all the stuff that I've done. Yes. Twisted Nanny is still playing on the Lifetime Movie Network. And you'll probably see my face on some commercials. I know I have an ad running right now on YouTube. I still haven't seen it. It's for, uh, a honey ad. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it and laugh. It's a funny oh commercial. I hope to one day see it, but I haven't caught it yet. Uh, if you do, oh my God, guys, please screen record it for me. And uh, oh. yeah, you know, uh, come say hi, email me or direct message me on Instagram or Twitter and uh, follow me and uh, yeah, join my idiot army. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. And guess what, guys? If you're like, oh, I can't spell Erickson, it's going to be in the show notes. Don't worry. The Boom. beautiful melody that Tara Erickson put alongside it. Talking no G. <laughs> Loved it. It was great. But it'll all be in the show notes, too. So you can just click right there, follow her DM, email, support in any way that you can. Awesome. Love it. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. And This is we'll so talk. much fun. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, this was... This was a blessing. I I haven't done it in so long. I was nervous. I was like, am I going to be rusty? And I was, but you filled in for me. You shone. You shined. And it was great. I, sh I shined. You shined. Underneath awesome. your dark, dark, shitty attempt to come back alive, Satani. But I think I, at the end, you've got it. You've got it. We brushed you off. You're ready to go. You're welcome. Thank, thank you for polishing my 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 giggles my laughs my voice i even came into it like hello this is stuff and it sounded <laughs> like i smoked a pack of nicks and then i and then you know, <laughs> got right into it dusted it off and now it's beautiful oh well tara Indeed. thank you so much um we're gonna 
I'm going to say goodbye to the audience real quick. Do you mind staying on for like 30 seconds? Yeah, I'll hang. Okay, sweet. Audience, thank you so much for listening, gurus and gurettes. We're going to talk at you next week. Bye-bye. Pew, 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 pew. Tara, do you want to say goodbye to them? Pew, pew. Bye, says Barb. Have a great day tomorrow. And if today wasn't great, it'll be better tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>